much hinging on this one at Heinz Field. They meet once again on week 15 here in Pittsburgh. And hello, friends. Jim Nance along with Tony Romo and Tracy Wolfson. Yes, New England clinches the division with a win. Pittsburgh needs a victory to hold Baltimore off by a half game and stay in the top six. And when the schedule came out, Tony, back at the spring, we got on the phone and said, hey, we got the game again, same weekend. We know it's going to have the same kind of impact and excitement going in. Here we are. It was our favorite game or one of them last year. As I tell you what, these two quarterbacks, we know they're going to be in it at the end of the year. And right now, December football, this is when it counts. And you don't want to be anywhere else this week, but right here for this game. So both teams, though, trying to bounce back off of devastating losses last week. Ben Roethlisberger got injured in the game, but uh, even though he's sore, he's fine. And what about his game plan today? Well, he needs to come out and play a great football game. Three-game losing streak. Your quarterback is the guy that needs to put his team on his back and go win the football game. And Tom Brady? Well, Tom Brady, same exact thing. Tough loss last week, but he's played against these guys a lot. This is a great matchup. It's coming down to the wire, isn't it? It always does. <laughs> I'm ready, and I can tell you are too. Folks, sit back and enjoy. Kickoff is coming up here on CBS. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. The Patriots, the healthiest they've been all season long. Not one player on the final injury report. Not the case for the Steelers, though. Once again, without Marcus Gilbert, their tackle, and without James Conner, out again with the ankle injury. This is the fifth straight game against the Patriots that the Steelers won't have a key player. They went on to lose the last four. We'll see if they can flip the script today, Jim. Well, that running game, we'll be watching closely if Pittsburgh can run on the Patriots because teams have done that as Belichick and crew get ready to get this started. Switzer back deep for the Steelers. Again, the Steelers need to win to keep the lead in the AFC North and in the fourth position. Kaskowski's kick. Fielded flat-footed for the touchback. And let's bring out Roethlisberger, who last week in Oakland, he's never won in Oakland, but he got injured in the game. He had his highest completion percentage of his career in a loss. He was 25 of 29. But the time missed in that game was a big difference. Of course, there was the banana peel slip at the end. Boswell trying to send it to overtime. But this team right now reeling, Tony, with three straight losses after a six-game win streak. Well, they know that they're the reason. Sometimes you look and you're like, hey, we got to do all these things better. The other team did this. They think it's themselves. They think they can get it corrected. And I tell you, it's that time of the year. You don't have any more time to wait. They need this football game. They actually start with Eli Rogers just brought up yesterday. PUP and IR all season long. And he's in on the first play as Roethlisberger goes down the field. And that was well shielded by Jackson. Pass thrown in the direction of Smith-Schuster. This Pittsburgh offensive front, they do a good job of protecting the quarterback. And as Tracy alluded to, Marcus Gilbert, this is the eighth straight week that uh, he's not a part of it. In fact, he's not going to be. He's been put on injured reserve. So, Feiler fills in for him. And he's done a good job while he's been in there. But they're going to go empty here on second and ten. Makes it far more difficult to double team multiple players for New England. Rushed out, across the middle, complete. Brown has it for seven. You got a pair of thousand yard receivers in Antonio Brown, who's caught at least five balls in every game this year. And Juju Smith Schuster, and that certainly gets the attention of everybody that goes against this team, including Coach Belichick and Brian Flores, who calls the defense for New England. It does, and the funny thing is, you sit and watch Juju keep playing good, and you're like, should we start to double this guy? Yeah. And you just, you're playing with fire if you leave AB one-on-one. -on -one. You see him in motion 84. He's the guy that they're gonna be ready to slow down in this football game. It's third and three. And that pass caught. Rodgers late to react to it, but grabs it for the first down at the 36. Again, Rodgers has been out with a foot injury. He was in on that, uh, well, a year ago in that play that came down to the wire with an interception in the end zone. And you see the slants, and Rodgers just on the outside. That's a bang-bang play. That, yeah. But this is where quarterback play can really set. I mean, that ball was perfectly, I mean, really, there was no way not to catch it. It hits you right in your chest. And these two quarterbacks, you know, we're going to talk about how important this game is based on schedule, move forward, implications and such. They toss it.
to the rookie Samuels and his first run is for about six fifth round pick out of North Carolina State again getting the action because Connor is inactive again with an ankle so this defense had a season high five sacks last week people call it the Miami miracle but they might look at it more like the Dolphin debacle if you're on the New England side as they pulled off the once of a generation type play to beat them and hand them their fourth road loss of the year. They haven't lost at home. But they've struggled on the road. It's a second of four here for Pittsburgh. And again, same play. Samuel has the first down. Samuels into the secondary, and he's run out of bounds at about the 33. Alejandro Villanueva helped free him for 25. It's a fantastic watch. Samuels go out and then come right back under, and you're going to see him go out and then come all the way back across the field with great vision and great design. Make New England overplay, sell it like it's a toss out wide, and you come back. James Washington comes in as an extra receiver. They go five wide. Ryan Switzer as well on the field. First down from the New England 33. You see all the empty sets here? This is a fantastic job by Pittsburgh, Jim. Here's the completion. Second catch for Rodgers. You like what you see? Yes, because it's very difficult to cover A-Bs. When you get in empty sets, they know they're trying to double them, but watch. A-B is lined up right here. So who's guarding him? You got to have a guy way inside. He can go either side on these plays. He's going to run up. He can go inside, outside. And they're going to have to drop people out. It's just harder to double with the safeties. It's second and six. Inches inside the 30. The New England jump. No flag. Yes, there's a flag down to the end zone incomplete. He was going for Brown who had a half a step on Gilmore. But it appeared to be a free play. Yes. Defense, number 98, five-yard penalty, second down. John Perry and crew on hand. That'll set up a second and one. And that right there was an example. Same exact formation. It's a point of emphasis for Pittsburgh to come out and say, empty formation. Let's put Brown as a tight end and let him go inside, outside, and then guess what they do there? Right down the middle of the field, take a shot, and really they had a chance. Brown has caught this year 12 touchdowns. Seven of them have been 20 plus. It would have been 24 yards. Second and one. And he'll pick up the first. Samuel's looking good on his first three handles. Running behind that time, David DeCastro. So an impressive opening drive put together by the Steelers. They've run seven plays, marching 55 yards, and a new set of downs right at the 20. And you know they're doing a good job. They're getting up on that ball. It's called a muddle huddle. Ben just puts them on the line, and if you look, there's Brown right in that area right there, and he's a tight end. The hard part is he can go inside, outside, like we talked about. The sideline isn't a defender anymore. Gilmore lined up across from him. Roethlisberger looks the other way, and he's got Samuels, who was lined up as a receiver, and he makes the catch. He played a lot of different positions at NC State. He can catch the football, and he got another first down. Going to come into your screen from up top right here, and Ben's looking at the middle linebacker. Sees him move left. Nobody in that window. And I tell you, if Samuels can start doing this, watch out, because last year, Pittsburgh had success in offense. It really went through the running back, whether it was in the run game or the pass game. Smith Schuster had a big yeah. play or two, but it was Le'Veon Bell who had the big day. First and goal from right at the 10. Lady. Highest What's red zone that? touchdown What's percentage that? in the league is Pittsburgh. Samuels fights for every inch and picks up about four. They have scored a touchdown 77% of the time. When they've gotten inside the opponent 20, that is actually the highest touchdown percentage in the red zone, as you see it, since 2003, 15 years. Wow. 15-year record is a good thing, I guess. Yeah, it's a good one. Although there's one red zone or two they'd like to have back, especially one at Denver. Yes, that's right. And a couple of these games have come down late. Pittsburgh's gotten off to great starts, but they haven't closed. Second and goal. Switzer at the bottom, Brown in the slot to the right. Again, they go empty. Roethlisberger 
Find Switzer, but only good for a yard or two as Jones is on him right away. Pass is complete to Ryan Switzer. And it'll be third and goal from about the five. Well, the last time we had this game, you mentioned how excited we were to pick up week 15 once again, New England at Pittsburgh. There was a little Jesse James play down here at this same end zone. There was, and I tell you, it's a catch now. It is. He it's, caught it. It was a changer. The implications of that, I mean, Pittsburgh ends up getting probably home field. You know, they, they don't end up going against Jackson. I mean, there's so many things there, but it happens. Yeah. Empty formation We're again. Going We're going right. Y'all got this. Here's the third and goal. Roethlisberger. Caught for the touchdown. Vance McDonald. A fantastic job by McDonald, but the offensive line gives Roethlisberger time. And hit patience. Watch the pocket in front of him right here. He's going to throw it now. Oh, oh, I have time. And that allows McDonald to go out, stop, come back under. That's a long developing route that only happens with great protection up front and poised by the quarterback. And now let's keep an eye on Boswell, the kicker, who's missed five PATs and two field goals last week, including one to send it to overtime. Confident boot right there from 33 yards out for the points. What a drive by Pittsburgh. 75 yards, 11 plays, 6 minutes and 20 seconds for 6 and the point. Well, how about this? The last five games in this matchup have gone to New England. And this is the first time now in this stretch, if you will, six meetings counting this one, with the Steelers strike first. It was also, the, by the way, the first time in the last 51 drives that New England's opponent held the football for over five minutes. 6.20 to be exact. That's how you beat Brady. Keep him off the field, That's right? Take 10% of the game clock away right there off the bat. That's Patterson into a flood of defenders. And he does not get out to the 25. At the top of 23, Tom Brady, his numbers, as they so often are, but particularly against this team, I just... Incredible numbers, 30 touchdowns, four picks. His career against the Steelers. We're not home it is any team. We're talking about a Pittsburgh team that is always good. And a lot of that is the schematic personality of both the football teams. Pittsburgh just, for this specific team, it's it's been very difficult because they like linebackers. And he likes to pick on linebackers. Coming out throwing right away and held on to with Artie Burns getting the start, trying to knock it out of the hands, but Burkhead holds on for four. That's one thing to watch. Artie Burns, who was the first-round pick back in 2016 out of Miami, basically been limited, just coach's decision, since uh, an early season game, week six against Cincinnati. Got beat up early in the season on some throws, but they brought him back into the game plan for this one. We're going to see how that works. Usually, this isn't the week to do it sometimes, but... <laughs> You can see that bounce corners right there. He didn't run across the field. Second and six. Take the handoff and throw. Back for it comes Patterson. We'll see. They'll mark it about a yard short of the first. Third and one on the way. Well, these third and ones, New England usually watch when they break the huddle. We were talking to Coach Tomlin about this. They like to get up and do things quickly. They don't overpower you necessarily. They just don't allow you to communicate. And you don't get everybody in. Two guys are running on the field now for Pittsburgh. Two are running off. Now everyone's got to communicate, and they snap too, it quick. Too many men on the field. And that carry by Michelle into the arms of Bostic. Exactly what we just talked about. They don't overpower you. They do it so fast from the huddle. At the snap, 12 men on defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Boy, they were late to put in a sub package, weren't they? But just like we said, that's that's exactly how they get you in these short yardage. Comes up over and over again. Keith Butler's defense. Did you see the lineup? A lot of praise coming from the New England camp all week about Javon Hargrave, who was one of those late running onto the field. And the nose tackle who can also rush the quarterback. First down, New England. Going against a team that leads the league in sacks. 
Maybe still has it. Across the middle, wide open. He's got Hogan and an open field untouched. Touchdown, New England, 63 yards. You want a good start on the road? You play action and get a guy open by 15 yards. And Tom Brady can hit. Hogan's going to be here. One of these two has to guard him. They're both caught looking in the backfield, and nobody runs with them. And you'll see right there, you're not going to find a player more open in the National Football League ever. Well, they're unorganized on the previous play on third and one, two minute out on the field, and then complete confusion on that one. That's the number one thing that I keep seeing come up in this matchup. The communication has to happen faster for Pittsburgh. Extra point with whistles and a flag first. Delay game, offense, five yard penalty. Diskowski says, now I gotta try from 38 yards. He missed the PAT in this game at Heinz Field last year. He's missed only one this season, 40 of 41. Has all the kickers around the league now. It's been such a game changer. Adding the distance on the point after, it seems to have kind of infiltrated the complete mindset on everything. Kicks so far less certain than they used to be. No question. Now from 38 to the point. And Guskowski able to deliver. This was the longest play of the year for the Patriots. Brady to Hogan for the touchdown. That's our thing. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was filmed right here for so many years in Pittsburgh, and the original set from the show is on display at the Heinz History Center. Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers, grew up in nearby Latrobe, Pennsylvania, and was a schoolmate of a guy named Arnold Palmer. Really? Yep. Friends as kids. Small world right there. So, just three plays, 77 yards, and this is going to be returned by Switzer. That's the 25 to the 28. He thought he could have really broken it, but Burkhead had hold of him. Tony, that touchdown, unbelievable how open it was. Well, the design is fantastic. Look at the misdirection. You go here, you come here, and then another receiver will come here, and then you'll go way over here and watch everyone for Pittsburgh. Just flow with all those guys and gets lost in the shuffle, Hogan. And that's the communication aspect. When everyone has to move like that, there's got to be talking on the defensive side. And New England makes it so hard on you if you have to communicate a lot before the snap as a defense. So the Steelers offense certainly had the crowd stirred at the beginning of this game, but quieted quickly. My Brady and company and their response. Quick response. Out over to James. Jesse James, and yes, that is the catch. And it goes for nine. You see Washington, number 13, the rookie out of Oklahoma State. There's a lot of enthusiasm in Steeler Town about his emergence over the last few weeks. They've seen a lot of more in practice than they have in games, but made some plays last week. Here's second and one. Samuel squeezes through a tiny opening, and he's got a first down out to the 47. So the Jesse James play, yes, I mean, it was a comeback by New England, but Pittsburgh fought back. Smith-Schuster got him close on a long catch and run. And as you said, that would be, a, the, of course, the, what is a catch? All kinds of meetings in the offseason. But that would now be a catch by today's standard. I think that would have been a catch. And it would have obviously changed the direction of a few of the routes you take in the playoffs. And these games have a way of coming down to the end each time, don't they? 30. Probably another one today. Here's the blitz. No chance. As Van Noy came roaring across. Just the timing of this by Van Noy is perfect. And you see, DeCastro, that's not his guy. It's the running backs. Yeah. The problem is 
the timing that you blitz at can really make it difficult because if you hit it at a different time, the running back's going to follow you and go. But once you take a step left, then you're done. Yeah, Samuels, and that's part of the learning process as pass pro for a rookie who, again, until recent weeks, had been very limited as far as playing time. We're going to give it to him here on the delay. Tossed down by McCourty. Devin McCourty, gain of four third and about 14, third and 16, it'll be. Well, James Conner just uh, was running wild early in the season and was, for some weeks, even the leading yardage uh, gainer, yards from scrimmage in the league at 500 yard efforts. You lose him, and you have a, a group of running backs that are up that have, as far as the longest run of the season, nine yards to speak of. See, the, the, we call this the amoeba defense. Who's the D lineman and who's not? Can you communicate who gets blocked? And that was before Samuels had a 25-yard run already in this game. Roethlisberger still up. Now he goes down. Thought about it, and it looked like he was going to just try to throw it in the area maybe of DeCastro, and they thought better of it wisely. And it was Jones who finally finished him off another loss of seven. And it really is a coverage sack. As you're watching here, Ben feels the pressure, and he can't get through the progression here. And you know why you feel that pressure as a quarterback? Because when you run that defense that we call amoeba, which means everyone's all over the place, and it's like you really don't know that you're protected. Someone could be coming free because you couldn't ID everybody, and so you rush yourself. If Ben would have just said, okay, it's protected, let me go through this, he could have found an open player. Good job by Belichick. He beat Minnesota with this all game. Here's Barry to punt. Edelman is back deep. So they got two sacks on that series after having a season-high five last week. 44-yard boot. Back comes Brady. 7-7 at Heinz Field. Mike Tomlin with Artie Burns next to him. Helmet on. Burns, who got the start, not in on this first play. There's sense of ball. Uh, that makes you wonder if he wasn't a part of the Hogan play. Here's Brady working the middle of the field and completing it to Gordon out to the 41. Josh Gordon, who leads the Patriots as far as receiving yardage. James White is their top ball catcher. And Gordon has really picked up things quickly in New England after starting the season at Cleveland. You see how fast they got that ball off, Jim? And there's Dublin, and he's also getting his hands on the ball more often. How got a gain of 11 in the first down. This is exactly what, see how fast they got up to the line of scrimmage? This is what they'll do. Oh, we're in I formation. No, we're not. We're going to empty out with fullbacks, and you have to communicate on defense. Get ready, everybody. Nope, you're not ready. Here's coming a big play all of a sudden. They keep you over and over again. And here they go again. With all kinds of protection, I mean, all day, and it's dropped after all that by Edelman, who should have had the catch at the Pittsburgh 40. And, and what we just showed you was a similar deal, similar formation, similar play, and oh, just a drop by Edelman. That's rare right there, hitting him in his chest. New England establishing the run so far with yeah. no rushes, no attempts. Game. Burkett is the back. We have not seen James White through the first seven plays for New England. Burkett, quick contact on him, give him two. Into the arms of Cam Hayward. Now, they're pretty stout in the middle. Pittsburgh. Got Hargrave, Hayward to it. I mean, this is a formidable, formidable front, and it's tough because New England's offensive line, I mean, David Andrews isn't the biggest guy in the world. He's got Hargrave, who's been playing really good football. Here's a third and eight, and White does come in. Flank to the right of Brady. With the pressure around Brady, tries to run away from it, and it's in and out of the hands of White. I love it. After the motion, Pittsburgh does a fantastic job of making Brady step up, but really, Brady never got a beat 
on what the defense was before the snap. That's the first time he felt any pressure around him as T.J. Watt was down around his feet, got back, and then was chasing Tom as he mm. turned around and saw it. The pass was a little behind White. Would have been close, wouldn't it? Yep. Good Fourth stop. and eight with Allen. With a pooch punt that will fly to about the seven, and it's going to be covered up, as always, by Matthew Slater. So each team drives for a touchdown on the first possession, punt on their second. Here to help life go right. And by Verizon. The best unlimited is on Verizon. America's most awarded network. We're back with the Steelers' third possession. And it starts at the eight-yard line. 23! New England, the only team in the league that has not allowed a drive of 85 yards or longer on the season. That's Switzer changing direction. Switzer with a gain of eight, but a flag back at the line of scrimmage. In fact, a couple of them. Holding. Holding. Offense. Offense. Number 66. Half the distance. Replay. First down. De Castro's penalty will put the ball back at the four. Well, you saw in that first drive, the empty. See the middle linebacker? He's going to always turn toward A.B. for the double. And that, that opens up other people. Now, all of a sudden, the same thing. Look in the middle of the field. And all of a sudden, the bottom of the screen, you get the touchdown because there's no help over there. If you keep A.B. and Smith-Schuster on one side of the field, all the players from New England go there. Ben knows that. You look to the other side. He's got Eli Rogers in the backfield. First and 14, back at the four. And back into the end zone, going deep. And Smith-Schuster never able to get close to that because, again, J.C. Jackson was boxing out, essentially, and shielded any attempt at that throw. And that's going to be key for New England. New England needs the second corner to consistently step up because I think Gilmore is playing really, really high-level football each week, and they're asking him to always have a tough assignment. You see, he's got to play inside right there. That's a monster matchup for a guy to play Antonio Brown with that much space. Brown has one catch for seven yards in this opening quarter. Four rushing on second and 14 to the sideline. What a catch. What a catch by Smith-Schuster. This kid keeps putting together a highlight reel by the week. That goes for 22. Roethlisberger comes to the line. He looks here. He says, okay, who's the double guy? He's here. Okay, I'm just going to throw it outside then. There's no help. I'm going A.B. to Smith-Schuster, and that's how I'm going to keep reading it until you double both of them. Hey, Jackson was up on him close, but it was Juju's effort reaching around and making the grab gets him out of the jam, out to the 26. Same defense, same exact type look. Again for rushing. Roethlisberger escapes the sack, goes sideline and connects. Again, it's Smith-Schuster, this time for about eight. And that's it for the first quarter. A good one it was. 7-7 seven, seven after one. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Week 15, and again, this game's so meaningful to each of these teams. Patriots trying to clinch a playoff berth and wrap up the division. They would do so with a win. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh trying to continue to hold off Baltimore, which has already won today, to go to 8-6 and six on the season. Steelers coming into this game at 7-5-1. and one. Here's a second and one. Roethlisberger falls as he throws it, and where will they get the forward progress to? For Brown. Well, this is uh, not the way to get on Dancing with the Stars. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a little slip out of it. It was Boswellian. <laughs> First down, though. Yeah, yeah. just enough. First three, ten. You're right. talking about the implications. I think this game, this is, I mean, it's important, obviously, any game is. And, but I don't know if Pittsburgh can really overcome if they lose this game. To lose this game and move back to basically the eighth seed. And go to New Orleans and get, next week. And have to go to New Orleans. It's just a daunting task to think that 
Now all of a sudden we need the Ravens probably to lose two games in a row. Here's the first and ten throw for a bounce six. Caught by Rodgers after 11 weeks as Pittsburgh rolled a six-game win streak. 7-2-1, and one, then lost three in a row, and all of a sudden there's the Ravens at 8-6. and six. And they have just seen these games disappear in the fourth quarter, being outscored in the three losses, 39-14. to 14. There are the schedules. Baltimore's got a tough one next week at the Chargers, then home against Cleveland to close it out. Oddly enough, Pittsburgh at 7-5-1 went 0-4 in the AFC West this year. Roethlisberger has his man. That's the rookie Washington for the first down at the 49 and a nine-yard pickup. Uh, the key's the pocket in front of Ben. You'll see we did this earlier. He's going to feel confident. Scan right, scan left, slide left, move, throw right back over the middle. If he's going to get that kind of time, you're going to see him go up and down the field today over and over again. And again, they've not had a running back out there. They've had Switzer come out of the backfield. They had Rodgers lined up in the backfield on this series. But again, staying with wide outs on the field. First and ten. Again, pressure. Pass away to Rodgers who's making his presence felt in his season debut after being on PUP. That's his fourth catch. And the big one, because all of a sudden, all-out pressure right there. New England's been doing this more and more. We call it cover zero, where they send everybody where you can't block them, and the ball has to come out, and the quarterback has to throw under duress and accurately. But if you get it to a guy, you better tackle if you're New England, then. No, four down, 27. Seven passes, no rushes on this drive that started back at the eight and then went back to the four after a holding call. Here's a second and four. Looking for Rodgers. There's a little bit of contact. And there comes the flag. From the back judge on Jonathan Jones. He was the official who threw it, was standing inside the five in the middle of the Pass field. Interference, defense, number 31. Automatic first down. Down the field, Jones gets that hand in there. Let's see if he pushes him. He doesn't really do anything. <laughs> I actually got to agree with him. I don't think he did much there. You see anything on that one? Yeah, but, you know, late there was nothing, but early on there was a little arm bar on him. A little arm bar. It was close, though. You but see they, that go all the time. You're allowed to feel the yeah. guy where he's at. I mean, that's well, probably the only the fourth pass interference call against New England this year. Yeah, yeah, fewest yeah. in the league. That's incredible. Fewest penalized team overall in the league for Patriots. <laughs> Back to the red zone for the Steelers. Roethlisberger middle of the field, and it's caught by Brown for the touchdown. We'll check the marker. Prior to the pass, holding defense, number 24, decline, touchdown. His 13th touchdown of the season, A.B. Antonio Brown. They were setting this up the whole game. Look at the little squirt release there. That was fantastic. Do you see how they switch spots? Roethlisberger holds the safety to the right, throws a back shoulder seam route. But he's been lined up in that tight end position the whole time, and then all of a sudden it's like, you take it, I'll go around you. A switch release. And again, that's the longest drive. We said it before they even took their first snap that New England had not allowed a drive of 85-plus. This went for 92. And the touchdown. Cyber on NFL Network. Antonio Brown has just tied his own team record for touchdown catches in a season, Tony. That's his 13th. It's almost like he's getting better with age. It's pretty impressive that this guy will still get double teamed. Because last year in the matchup here, he got injured in that game with a calf injury and held only a couple of catches before yep. he wasn't able to play the second half. It was a huge loss the rest of the way in that game. Considered the league's most prestigious honor, the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award. It's just fabulous recognizing players whose passion 
to impact lives extends beyond the game. It led them to leave a positive legacy in their communities. Look at Devin Colt McCourty, Cam Hayward, nominees for the Patriots and Steelers. Congratulations to them both. Very active, doing great things. Here's a handoff to Michelle. Sonny Michelle, a pickup of about four. Yeah, Devin McCourty. Of course, he's been eight-time captain of this team, this defensive side for New England. Cam How uh, Hayward has been just a remarkable guy with his foundation and a number of clauses that he's brought great things to. Here's Michelle picking up a first. So the rookie from Georgia gets the first two handles to start this drive and picks up 16 yards total on those two carries. England getting an eye formation. And right now they are dictating what we call personnel, which means you have base personnel, which is big for Pittsburgh. That's big people are in the game. And they're keeping them in it. Run heavy start to this drive. And Michelle this time for three more. And, and why you do that, Jim, is because all of a sudden they're going to, oh, we're an empty formation with the same thing, and now you have all these big guys in the game, and now Gronk and the people you want, Edelman, all of a sudden can't get double teamed. That's how they're able to consistently kind of keep other teams off balance. And you'll see him stay in this and then shift out and get everybody wide at some point. Yeah, there's Gronkowski in motion. He has not been targeted so far. Second and seven. Big lane for Michelle. And finally, Vince Williams has hold of him, but a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Mm, this one's coming back. Holding offense, number 77, 10-yard penalty, second down. It's called on Trent Brown, and it takes away a 25-yard run. Mm, that's, you see Trent right there at the point of attack. Got to let him go. Holding on to Hayward. Yeah, and, and that happens all the time where once the back gets right by you, as an offensive lineman, he's by you. You just, as that guy pulls away, you don't keep hanging on him. So a big change on the penalty. 35-yard difference from the game to the 10 yards step off and now Brady steps back with pressure able to get it over to his fullback and Devlin stretches out to about the 41 got seven back third and ten coming up Brady sliding up in the pocket chip on walk gets outside Brady square shoulders and gets it off he had Devlin early but couldn't get around to throw it. Now here we go third and ten does Pittsburgh come after him? This is going to tell you their game plan for this game as it gets later in the passing situations. Is it the front four and play coverage? Almost jump. They bring four. They bring heat. Pass to White. And they hold him four yards short of the first. Sean Davis on the tackle. And Ryan Allen will punt for the Patriots for the second time. Excellent job keeping Brady off balance there. He felt like he he called a route or two that got the ball out of his hands quickly and cased the pressure. Pittsburgh made him feel it and then dropped out just a four-man rush in his zone on the back end. That was the first catch for White, his 77th of the season. Again, Gronkowski without even a target. As Allen kind of goes sideways, looking to angle this. Switzer, the returner. Yeah. 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 Bounces near the 10. Chase to the end zone. Oh, two diving attempts. And they never touch the end line. And then it's down at the one-yard line by Humber. Look at Jones and Burkhead. Special teams doesn't matter unless you have one guy and two guys who can do it good. Order online at dominoes.com.
Forever Mark. Discover the Forever Mark tribute collection at forevermark.com. And buy Progressive Insurance, handing off big savings to you. Welcome back to Pittsburgh. We just saw one of the great circus acts the NFL's ever seen. It would play was challenged by the Steelers. They thought Burkhead had a toe on the line, which would have made it a touchback, but the replays seem to confirm it's a beautiful play by that special teams After unit. After reviewing the play, the ruling the field stands as called. First and ten at the one yard line. Check out the Ringling brothers, Jones and then Burkhead, <laughs> with the trapeze act here. You see, Jones already hits it, then Burkhead, but this is fantastic because when he hits it, now it can't touch Slater if he touched the end, so Slater moves away. I mean, I mean those are such well-coached. Well, look at this. Exact. They're all... I mean, wow. That's that's when you know the head coach makes it a point of emphasis to be great on special teams. I mean, Gene Steratore, you're back in New York. You don't see anything like that very often, if ever. You, you don't, Jim, and it is a great play, as you both have alluded to, and it is not the plane of the goal line. It is the body point, which you guys have said as well. A fantastic play and a great ruling by the covering official also. Good point there, Gene. First and ten from the one. And coming out with it is Ridley, the former Patriot, bursting ahead for 12. He's going to run hard. He's going against his old team, the cutback. And coming out, that's a huge run coming out of your own end zone. The breather for the quarterback mm. and that team, the coaches. Ridley, who played four oh, years for New England, he had some big seasons. Oh, yeah, One 1,300-yard oh, yeah. season tore an ACL in the last year of his rookie deal. And then Patriots didn't resign him. Here's a first down play. Roethlisberger on the run. Finds his man. It's Brown. Antonio Brown with another big gain. This time for 24. Antonio Brown, he's one on one on the outside. And against McCordy, he sees Ben traveling and he had a go route and he just comes back down. Great feel and knack for foot for the game of football, and he just finds that soft spot and Wow, two plays, bam, 35 yards, here we go. Yep, and they started at the one. Of course, they just drove 92 yards for a touchdown the last time they had it. Samuels returns to the backfield. And the rookie with the Castro in front. He takes his guard's lead block and picks up yet another first down. Phil the Nueva also sealing that side. It goes for 17. David DeCastro. 66 on the pole, keeps working, and he gets right up in a corner's worst nightmare is to see around the edge a guy twice your size. And he goes to sit in with the Patriots on the wrong bench. A little breather, but seven carries for 70 yards for Samuels. And then they come right back and empty. I mean, this is a perfect game plan on what Pittsburgh has done in this game right now. It, it puts Allen in a bind. After that run, Samuels has more yardage on the ground through the first quarter and a half of this game than he did on the season coming in. Roethlisberger saves the sack as he throws it in the direction of Smith-Schuster. That was Lawrence Guy who was draped on him. Well, Kyle Van Noy right here, he's been going to A-B, but on this specific one, they adjust, they go left. And that's because multiple times Roethlisberger has seen that same cover one look and he's gone there. That's an adjustment by New England. We'll see if Ben picked it up and decides to start going back away from him. That's the guy to look right now in the field. Same type of thing. Find out where he's at. And if he drops back, you go somewhere else. They're coming after you, Ben. Five man rush. Here it is, second and 10. Over the top and he's picked off. Smith-Schuster makes the immediate tackle as Duran Harmon has picked the Steelers for the fourth time in his career, including the one last year in the end zone, the ceiling. Just over the top. That's ball. Schuster having a little word after that interception. Who was that on, Tony? Uh, well, right there. That's on Ben. Smith-Schuster has an over route. It's like an all-go special, and you just can't throw that in that coverage. It's man to man. You get undercut with a safety on top. Pass fired across the middle. Incomplete. 
So Deron Harmon's 17th career interception, but none bigger than the matchup here last year off the deflection. He wore jersey 30 last year. And there he is now. Taking a number that used to belong to Malcolm Butler, and he's got now four of his career 17 picks come at the hands of the Steelers. And Ben's now thrown a pick in eight straight matchups against New England. Second and ten. Immediate hit and tackle on Edelman. It'll be third and about four coming up. Uh, Joe Hayden wrapping him up immediately. Edelman's first catch. Brady's going to scan the defense, find out what they're in, signal to a receiver. Does he love the play? He likes what he sees. Okay, let's snap it. If not, he'll call something. They came in on him at the last minute. The pass is wide of the mark. Intended for White, no flag. And that's Vince Williams on the coverage. Watt with the pressure on the outside. And this is where Pittsburgh has been getting around quarterbacks all season. From the right, you can't wait this out. Brady's got to let it go early. Makes it an inaccurate throw. Outstanding, and that's really what Pittsburgh has done. They're making you throw just before you're ready with that pressure. And that's really what they haven't been able to do in years past with Brady. Brady hit his first five passes of the day, including the touchdown pass to Hogan. But three of seven since, as there's been a little more intensity coming out of that defensive front from Pittsburgh as the game's gone on. Switzer with the catch and out of bounds. Steelers. Back with the football. Five minutes to go in the half. Seven points. Steelers lead. The Steelers have been the most dominant team in the league by any single quarter with their second quarter performances this year. Plus 96 coming in. Now you had a touchdown in this quarter already on Roethlisberger's second touchdown pass. If they only could have solved some of the issues in the fourth hey, quarter, Four by one which has led to their demise the last three weeks, it'd be a different record. Here's a handoff to Switzer. And Tracy, let's go down to you. More on Ben. Jim, Ben Roethlisberger showing no sign so far of that injury that he's been dealing with. But I was told reports of cracked ribs are completely false. He's actually dealing with a multiple segment muscle injury is what they're calling it. Roethlisberger said it feels like he got hit with a fastball in the back. He also said it hurts the most when he throws to the left. He went through a lot of treatment this week, and I was told they showed improvement, but it's all about pain management for him out here today, Jim. Yeah, thank you. He's had uh, some restless night's sleep this week as he's able to get it over to Switzer. <laughs> he's got another first down. It was such a strange situation last week in Oakland, Tony, and they spent a couple of days this week trying to, like, diffuse and get the record straight. The old uh, X-ray gate, rib gate, whatever you want to call it, they got these X-rays that came back. They didn't have any clarity. The machinery, you couldn't find it in that old stadium in Oakland, and it kept them out for a good chunk of that second half. Well, there's truth to all. I mean, these things, it's hard sometimes to decipher exactly what's going on with your ribs. And I've been there, you know, where it's just the doctors have to figure it out, and without it, no one wants to let you go back on the field without it. You could have a punctured lung, and there's many things. Well, they have one of the best medical crews in the league, led by Dr. Jim Bradley, and that's Gilmore breaking up that pass. And a reminder of the Verizon Halftime Report coming up. J.B. Phil, Nate Boomer, Coach Cower with all the latest scores and highlights coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Ben doing a lot of play calling at the line of scrimmage. And New England's not even disguising. You see that one safety in the middle, and you see everyone man-to-man. -man. They just do that over and over. And they either send five guys, or they come after you with a, about four guys every other play. Here's a second and ten. Pass pulled down. Smith-Schuster stiff arm on Jackson. And wisely reaches out with the football. I'm not sure they gave him that extension. Might have been another yard closer, but they marked him two yards short of the first. Been feeling the pressure, the pocket get moved up in the middle. 
And Jackson pushes him out. Let's see if he can get there. Smith Schuster, ball goes out right. Just short. About a yard and a half. You got Antonio Brown lining up in the backfield, coming out of it now. Third and two. See two guys running with him? There's a lot of guys on him. Roethlisberger jump pass. And Smith Schuster looking around for no flag. Jackson on the coverage. And Pittsburgh will come off with 311 to go in the first half. Well, motion, 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 motion by Brown. Motion, 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 motion by New England defense. How many guys are over there on Brown? And Ben knows it, so he's got to come all the way back. But that play was designed as a one-guy type route. You're going to motion him back and forth and run right to the flat. Problem is New England was well prepared for that. Second punt for Jordan Berry. Fair catch by Edelman near the 18, and we'll be back to Pittsburgh in 30 seconds after this. Keep an eye on that branch. Might get windy. Have a good shift. Fire pit. Last use 0600. I'd stay close. Good morning. Get ready to switch. Protected by flow. Should say protected by Alan and Jamie, right? <laughs> Should it? When you bundle home an auto, Run, Alan. you get more than just savings. You get round-the-clock protection. Three minutes to go in the first half. Ball's at the 19. Rob Gronkowski, a year ago in this matchup, had a career-high 168 yards on nine catches. He's had eight touchdowns in his career in six games against the Steelers. He has not been targeted today. Not once. This is about the time of the game, though. End of the first half, end of the games. He's going to get targeted. They're not going to go too long without it, but well done by Pittsburgh so far. Handoff. Up the middle, crawling ahead for two is Michelle with the ball. Of course, New England so dangerous at this point, working the last couple of minutes of the halves, and they have a chance here to do a little double up because they will be getting the football to start the third quarter. They've never done that before. <laughs> this is New England that third pass to Pittsburgh right now. Making life uncomfortable for opposing quarterbacks. Weekly with this pressure. Second and eight. And traffic got the pass over. Edelman, who's decked at about the 24. Hayden got to him first. And that'll be third down. And as the clock's running down to the two-minute warning. Two-minute warning for New England. That was a screen pass versus pressure. It was a good call, but Hayden comes up. Makes a big tackle. Big play coming when we come back. Honda. Hurry into the Happy Honda Day sales event today. And by Walmart. Light up Christmas at Walmart. So a third and five coming up for New England. They actually did target Gronkowski once on the previous drive, but the pass was nowhere near him. Again, with no catches, he moves into a slot on the right side. Coming after him. Brady tells his back to block the guy in the middle. He doesn't pick it up. Pass to the sideline with Patterson picking up the first. They got lucky here because James White doesn't go and pick up. The offensive line does a great job and great throw. Patterson with a good route. His forte is a little more horizontal, get the ball in his hands, but well-executed route on the sideline and a big, big difference getting that first down for the rest of this half. From the 32. That's White. For a bounce. Five or six. Went down by Mike Hilton. Romano, Romano. 
Well, you got all three timeouts. They're going to play quick. Here we go. Get up on the line because the communication happened from Pittsburgh. Are they all ready and they know what they're doing? They're pointing. They're looking. And a pre-snap penalty coming on the Patriots. And they were pointing at the false start. allowed in the last two minutes of the half Jim only 10 on the season fewest in the league in the first half second half it's another story there's a book to be written on that ball start right tackle at 132 with the clock running please reset the game clock to 122 10 second runoff New England has elected not to use a timeout game clock will start and they're ready for play so down to 122 and you looked at well, what Pittsburgh's been able to defend at the end of the first half. I, I like that decision because if you're not going to get a first down, you don't give them any more time to. And if you do get first downs, you have a ton of time because you have three timeouts still. They have not sacked Brady today. Pocket sealed again. Pass down the field and in and out of the hands of Edelman. Joe Hayden was there twisting around and making contact with the football. Does he get him early? Oh, I mean, it just, it's right bang, bang. I know if Roethlisberger likes it, if you're New England, he was there early. Roethlisberger trying to encourage this defense to give him the ball back, give him a little time to do something before halftime. Third and nine. To Patterson. Was he ever down? What an effort. They still may have marked him just short. If Great I'm, effort by Cordero Patterson. If I'm Pittsburgh, I'd take a timeout right now. New England's going to try and snap this football. What an effort. It's really close. New England wants to snap it. They should relook at this. If I'm Pittsburgh, take a timeout if they're not going to do it for you. Previous play will be reviewed. By the way, the officials went ahead and moved the chains, which I wasn't sure when I first saw the side judge putting ball down. I thought it might be about a foot short, even with that heroic effort. They're supposed to make those decisions quickly, and they did right there. We'll be back in 30 seconds after this from Walmart. see the knee twisted and turned and still able to keep his balance the sticks were moved so the call on the field was first down and then upstairs look the ham keeps him up he got out of the tackle from Hilton who would have had taken New England off the field they would have been punting let's bring in Gene Sterator Gene what did you see here I think this is really close guys and if you go back a little before he actually rolls it appears to me that on one of the replays I've seen that his right shin appears to be down just beyond a long straight line, which would put him short. As we watch this replay, watch the right shin at right about that point. If that shin was down, he's going to be short. We're going to back it up for you here, think G. that shin was down, I think it's a first down. If you back up and look. It's right there. That's that what part he's of talking his about. right shin. Yeah, that's so, correct. So go back just a little bit more. Back it up, back it up, back it up, and you'll see, keep going back, 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 back right there. Are they going to call that as the shin being down right there? That's going to be the key call, and this is a fantastic This is a view. great angle here. That was the replay right there. Now, did New York have a chance? Jim, you know what this call is. Go ahead, just tell us. <laughs> no, I have no you idea. You know this. Go ahead, tell us. Hold on, I'm getting talked to my producer. <laughs> yeah, right. I gotta wait a sec, guys. Uh, he's always talking. But I'm gonna say. After reviewing the play, 
with the shin down. The ball was just past the 40 and a half yard line. It'll be fourth down. All right, Gene Steratore right on the money with that. So fourth and about a foot. He's still got to get the chain gang to move back a little bit and reposition. You're at your own 40. You got 42 seconds to go. It's going to be about a, well, it looks like a, almost a full yard away. Only Belichick would go for this. You know, at this point in the game, in this situation, 42 seconds, fourth and one. You can try and draw them off sides. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do here, but you, New England has no problem going for these type of plays. They're talking about the clock. They're going to start the clock. They're going to start the clock once he blows the whistle. Now, what you could do if you're New England is he's about to blow the whistle, and now the clock starts. Fourth and a foot. They're wasting time. Oh, boy. Look at this. Genius. <laughs> and they took another time. Pittsburgh should have taken a timeout. They're going to wait all the way down. Pittsburgh. They should have. Oh. Joe Hayden is deep. And got a little bit of pressure on Allen. Ball bounces at the 25, and Hayden watches it settle down at about the 14 with a marker on the field. Oh, what an unbelievable play there by Belichick to make you think you're going for it. So you're not going to take a timeout and help them with your time. And then I'm going to stand there. I'm going to rush up to the line, get you ready. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to run off the field, and now all of a sudden, you can't even try and go get a field goal. You call that high-level stuff, uh, that's which gets you more fired level. up than anything. Wow. Ineligible downfield, number 53, kicking team. Pittsburgh elected to tack on the five-yard penalty. First and 10. I mean, right there, boom. We're not snapping the ball, guys. We're just going to get up and make them look like it. And when we do this, they're either making them burn the timeout, but after all the time, I mean, that was... And and the other part is Brady gets up and moves. He might draw him off sides. I mean, there's a couple things there, but that's being prepared right there, folks. Again, the Verizon halftime report is coming up shortly. JB and Phil getting all set. Nate and Boomer. Coach Cower, one snap and we'll be handing it off to New York. Steelers lead it at halftime, 14 to seven. The Steelers played a fantastic first half. Just the interception, which didn't cost them at all. They got it back. This is exactly how they wanted this game to go, getting pressure on Brady. Halftime is next after these first half highlights from Verizon and a word from your local station. Hey guys, get something for Nana. Brian. Uh, Thomas. Yeah. Hey. Hey, uh, quick question. Do you like paying for things that you don't need? No. And do you want to get things you love for free? Who wouldn't? Exactly. Right. That's why Verizon decided that everyone in the family should get the unlimited they want without paying for things they don't. And why it now comes with six months free Apple Music. Dad, oh. Apple Music. You get Want to stay up to date? Hey Siri, show me football standings. Where the love go? Five, four, three, two, I let one go. Where the love go? Five, four, three, two, I let one go. Second half about to begin in Pittsburgh. Jim Nance, Tony Romo, Tracy Wolfson, and all the crew headed eventually to February 3rd and Super Bowl 53 in Atlanta and Roethlisberger with two touchdown passes and they end up blanking the Patriots in the second quarter. It's the first time in 81 games that New England did not score a point in the second quarter. Well, I'm not, you got to give Pittsburgh credit for this now, but one for five on third down is not very New England-like and oh, how many plays they had in that first half? 22 plays? I mean, that's not going to get it done, especially on the road and this is why we talked about their road issues a little bit. We thought with everyone coming back and being healthy, Gronkowski, Edelman, the ability of these guys all being there, it would change, but it really hasn't today. And the pressure that Brady is getting up front, it's real. And he's not having the ability to scan through the progressions like he normally does. And really, it's Pittsburgh's game now. They're, this isn't just all of a sudden randomly get better. 
New England's going to have to figure out how to move this football with chunk plays and some new stuff. And they're going to have to figure out how to move Gronkowski around and get him outside the numbers because right now Pittsburgh is taking away the inside of the football field. Okay, starting the second half, it's Boswell's kick. Townsend at the two, and Patterson will not chase after us. So touchback time, and it's our time to go to Tracy. Jim, Mike Tomlin pleased with his team's efforts and the way they responded, especially with the communication issues in that first drive for this defense. He said they need to communicate better in this second half. As for Bill Belichick, he said it's all about the penalties. They need to clean that up. Will we see more of Gronk? He said he's played the whole half. Jim? Well, Gronkowski again held without a catch, as you saw Phil and the crew back in the studio emphasize that as well. Here's the first snap of the second half. They're going to go to the ground and rip off a good run with Michelle for about 14. Just a reset. If New England wins, it clinches the division for the 10th consecutive year, would put them in the spot as the two seed at the moment. That would give Baltimore the lead in the north, and the Colts would move into the sixth spot. Pittsburgh would drop all the way back to number eight in the current seedings, if you will. Top six get in in the AFC if they lost. Brady sees that it's zone coverage. Here they come. This time they're up on Michelle quickly, and he falls forward for about a yard. So we gave you the New England perspective on the playoff picture, just to look at it from Pittsburgh's perspective with a win stays in the fourth slot that would put Houston as the two at the end of the week of course the first two get the first round by after week 17 Baltimore would be at the six leaving Indianapolis on the outside even after a shutout win over Dallas today second down and nine and just a carry for about two and Cam Hayward Able to finish off Sony Michelle. Another third down and medium. One for five in the first half. This is right here where Pittsburgh has handled it in years past. This is where New England really dominated them. And you see on the season, one of the better teams in the league, New England every year, year in, year out. Where's Gronkowski? And do they come after him? Those are the two questions for Pittsburgh. Gronkowski lined off the right side. On third and six. Pass is dropped. That was Gordon who would have had the first down. He was open and couldn't hold on. That's three drops today for New England. Cover two right here. Safety's getting way back. Brady sees it quickly and puts a perfect ball into Gordon's chest. And his elbow, actually. Should have been in his chest because you got to move your elbow out of the way. <laughs> Gordon, who had a touchdown already this season against Pittsburgh week one when he was a member of the Browns. And the Browns and the Steelers open the season with a tie. Allen shanks this punt. Hits the back of the leg of Slater, and it's down at the 20. All right, quick work for the Patriots, and they're off. High stakes drama playing out at Heinz Field for the Crafts and the Rooneys. Robert and Jonathan, Dan Rooney on the right. They've been in this situation so many times. Wow, that's continuity right there, and two of the better franchises in the National Football League, and it starts at the top. They've been good for a long time, both these places. One of them has been in the AFC Championship game, at least one of them, 13 of the last 14 years. I saw Art Rooney before I mentioned uh, inaccurately, I'm sorry, but the Rooney family just uh, has meant so much to this league, and we were talking about the history of these two teams and what they've done together, 13 out of the last 14 years, and There is Art. Mm, he's nervous right now because this, the playoff implications of this, check, 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 we check, well check. documented oh, in this football three. game. And Baltimore gets the division. You're out of the playoffs if you're losing. If it ended tomorrow, and then you got to go to New Orleans. It's this is a must-win game it's for a Pittsburgh. Tough assignment, no question. As Roethlisberger loads it up, goes down the field. What a catch! What a catch by Washington! 
But that's what they've been waiting for around here. You said it. What a catch it is on McCourty. Washington, get your head around and then go up and get it. And to win the big games in December, you need big performances. And that catch is one of those rare plays that you don't always get from a player in Washington. They said he's good. They like him. He's got to he can go down the field and get it. That's the play they've been waiting and for. And you just said it. Yep. They've been waiting for it. There it was. And they couldn't be a for better time than right now for him to pull it out. And went for 32 yards. Meanwhile, they get back over to Smith-Schuster, who stiff arms Jason McCourty. Only good for one. I think you'll see the adjustment for New England to start to pressure in the second half. It'll be a run pressure, but it'll also, they had some success a few times in the first half, making Roethlisberger throw five-man pressures. When they do that, He's got to get rid of that ball quickly, and he hasn't quite had the big plays unless he has time so far in this football game. Second down and nine from the New England 42. And that's Washington again. And he breaks out of the tackle. And James up ahead turns around and throws a block on Chung. And he was able to escape Jason McCourty, who had been stiff-armed on the previous play by Smith-Schuster. He's got another 24 with this catch and run. Five-man rush, five-man block. This time, Roethlisberger throws the quick route. Last time, he tried to wait on Smith-Schuster, threw an interception versus that look. He adjusted, gets the ball out of his hands, and then you see Washington, and the talent you said they've been waiting for. <laughs> Here it comes again. Yes. So keep saying it, Jim, because the Pittsburgh fans like it. From the 18. They toss it to Samuels, who gets the edge. Gets the edge, gets inside the 10, and he's down to about the four. Antonio Brown threw a beautiful block on that side. It's the same play earlier. Toss it, you're going over there. Nope. Here we go back this way. New England's off balance. And then Brown's block right at the end. Look at this block. Shielding off Gilmore. The whole time comes all the way across the field. And here it is. Got to punch it in. Got to get sevens here. And New England go, go, go. needs a stop right here. This is getting away from the time of possession. The amount of time this defense is on the field today is a lot. First and goal from the four. Samuels, stutter step, nowhere to go. Just trying to get back to the line, which he does. You have second and goal. You can do either. You have either option here. You can run the ball or pass. And this is when you're in a situation as a defensive coordinator, it's very difficult. Belichick likes to dictate to the offense, though. And what he'll do is he'll give you a run front so you can't run it. And he'll make you pass it. But he'll drop everyone out or he'll come after you. They're coming after him here. This is all up pressure. This ball has to leave Ben's hand right away. One guy will come free. From the four. He signals outside. Let's see if he gets it right. On second and goal. Looking A.B.'s way. Looking now. Trying to fight off a sack and throws it away in the back of the end zone. Lawrence Guy had hold of him, and Ben's one of the hardest players in the league to bring down, as you just witnessed. He is, and he got away right at the end, getting rid of the ball. And, and the flag's coming wants out. wants a flag. And he's going to get it. Yep. I oh, mean, that was... Intentional grounding. It's the right Offense call. number seven. Penalty includes the loss of down. Third down, quarterback was in the pocket and threw to an area unoccupied by an eligible receiver. You'll see him stay in the tackle box. And right here, he gets it away, but there's nobody on that side of the field. So that's going to be called. I was shocked they hadn't called it yet. We have Ben grabbing hold of Guy's face mask. So it's all the way back to... Outside the 13th, third and goal. By the way, on that last one, Belichick made it look like all-out pressure. And he backed two guys out with the exact same look he's done three times in this game. Ben signals to a quick pass. It's taken away. That's why you end up taking the sack, getting the penalty. Just a cat-and-mouse game right there that Belichick won on that one. He, he beat me, too, but Ben, I, I know what you were thinking. He was trying to get the quick pass out. 
Yeah, it looked like he was one to go to Brown quickly. I think mm -hmm. the officials realized they mismarked the football. They had a spot at the 13, and they had to move it back another yard. So it's outside the 14, where it should be. Now, here you go, third and goal. Hey, 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 the Amoeba hey, defense, hey. people walk around. Take your time. You'll have time if you can pick it up. Rush five, lofting it, lofting it, and... Well, the feet down, incomplete. That's McDonald with Chung on the coverage. It's a great throw, threw it with touch, gave him a chance to go up and get it. It's the feet, though. It's a wonderful catch, and no. right foot is out. Patrick Chung keeps trying to rip that arm out down at the bottom. No dispute about that. Now a big moment coming up because Boswell has been such a factor in recent games. So here's the field goal try to go up two scores, 32 yards. Boswell is wide right. Wow, you were right, Jim. That's, that's in his head. That is worst case scenario for Pittsburgh. New England, you're still down one. By USAA, official NFL salute to service partner. Aquaman, in theaters Thursday, rated PG-13. And by K Jewelers, for all the moments, for love, forever. So from the model trains at the Carnegie Science Center to a train wreck a moment ago here at Heinz Field. A missed 32-yard field goal that would have put the Steelers up two scores. Here's the reverse fake across the middle. A completion to Burkhead for about a Boswell now 59% on the season. This was pregame, and he was even frustrated at that point. They brought in two kickers this week, Tony, after his two misses at Oakland from 39 and 40 last week that would have sent it to overtime, and this just 32 yards away. Ultimately, Mike Tomlin told us that he's earned his way into the stadium. He was the Pro Bowl kicker out of the AFC last year, signed a long-term contract in August, but it's been a struggle the entire season. 59% now. It's the worst percentage for any kicker in the league, field goal percentage, minimum of 15 attempts since 2007 in the league. You know right there, he knows how important that kick was and what this means. And last week, this week, it's going to be tough on the head coach and the organization to... I'll stick with you. I mean, it's just harder. You can see it's 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 in your head at this point where it's like you're missing in pregame a lot. You're adjusting. That's really wide right. And you know, it's just it's not an easy game from one year to the next. Flags are down. I tell you what's really difficult is there's a strong possibility they're going to need him at the end of this game. <laughs> there, there's a very strong possibility, and they've needed him at the end of a few games now. Yeah. Any win at this Ball point. Start. Offense, number 11, five-yard penalty, first down. Please reset the game clock to 725. But a nod to the New England defense that stopped the number one red zone offense in the league. Again, almost 80% touchdown percentage in the league this year. They had first and goal with it, the four. And, and that's what I tell you, though. Belichick's one of the few coaches who dictates to the offense. And he did. He made you call a quick play thinking it's all about pressure. I would have done the exact same thing there, and he completely got you and made you hold the football. There's Brady to come after him as he gets rid of it and got a first down. Catch by Edelman. Another marker down on the far sideline line of scrimmage. Illegal formation. Offense. Number 11. Covered number 87. Both players are on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. First down. It's one of the things that... Uh, Bill Belichick told Tracy at halftime, these penalties said, we've got to stop. You're on the road. Every five, ten yards, it's just it's just hard to get first downs over and over again consistently, and every time you get behind the chains, now the half a second when the pass rush gets there, and you've got to let go of that football. First and 20, Tom Brady's going to have to play great down the stretch. He's never done that before, though, has he? <laughs> Maybe once or twice. So that's that's win. eight penalties on the way one today, five of them pre-snap. Pass complete, and it's Edelman to the 36. And Vince Williams brings him to the ground after 11. 
And you see the pressure being applied. Pittsburgh just rushing four, but they're getting pressure, and Brady's having to get through it quick. Right there. It's a, he has not been sacked, though, no, by the number one sack defense in the league. One of his greatest attributes that doesn't get talked about enough is his ability to avoid sacks and get the ball out of his hands because he gets through progression so quickly. It helps the football team because they never get behind the chains, so they can always make up for it on the next play. Bud Dupree hobbled to the sideline after that last play. Anthony Ciccolo has come in for him. Here's a second and nine, and they get Brady for the first time. It's T.J. Watt. Want to know why you're not throwing at Gronk and why Brady's getting it? Because these two guys are doubling him pretty consistently in the middle of the field. Brady's got to look, and then he's going to throw somewhere else. But this pass rush is getting there in less than two seconds, and Brady, you just can't go crock someone else. It's our, you're getting hit. This is the best Pittsburgh has looked against Brady in years up front. Third and 16. Now he's got time, and it's wide of the mark, and a flag is thrown. It's going to be on Hayden. Coverage by Hayden on Chris Hogan, and it'll be a big one. That was on a third and 16 play. Pass interference, defense, number 23. Automatic first down. Hayden right there doesn't need to do that. The ball's out in front. He does pass interfere. He pulls him from the backside, but he didn't have to. And it, Patriots desperately in need of something to go their way. Got a call that was the right call. And now, here they come. Uh oh 21-yard penalty from midfield. Michelle. Tour Chicolo brought down by Alu Alu. 21 yard penalty on a third and 16. Watt with that sack. He had not had a sack, did not Watt in the last three games, the three losses. When he's had a sack in a game, they've won. They haven't lost. They're 5 0 1. As Roethlisberger thought he'd be up by two scores at this time. Instead, it's just a seven point difference. And Pittsburgh has. Dominated the football game, and it's only a one score game. Second and five. And that's going to be Michelle with a first down. This feels similar to the two weeks before for Pittsburgh. I mean, they've been, you know, they led in each of the last three games in the second half, I believe. And oh, yeah, against they, the they Chargers. Crumbled, crumbled yeah, they just, late. You know, this is right where they're at, and they've got to figure out how to finish. There's always a play or two that you look at and you're like, I wish it. This is this is what they've been preaching, and that and the kick, the kicks matter. I mean, <laughs> L.J. Ford has come in. Vince Williams is down on the Pittsburgh sideline. As three Steelers, including Morgan Burnett, wrap up the ball carry after a couple tonight on 60 Minutes. It helped. Take down. He helped take down big tobacco. And now this high-powered lawyer is taking aim at the opiate industry. Plus one young man's bold vision to clean up the world's plastic pollution tonight on 60 Minutes. Second and eight. Burkhead off the right side. Picks up about 10 and a first. Starting to run the football effectively. Mm. They need to because these guys are rushing the passer. And it's a fullback wham, which means Devlin goes down on a big guy. Hargrave and moves him out of the hole. And if you can catch the big guy looking in the backfield as a fullback or someone, you can come in there and, and wham him real quick and you get a big opening. First down. Burkhead, again, a big hole. He's got five or six yards before he's even touched. He's got another first down. Devlin, one of those who helped open it up for him. Just a, another exact play. Watch Devlin. He's going to come down. And we just call a wham. And right what happens, right there, he ends up Washington taking the middle linebacker as the slant from the front and just opens up a huge hole. How about New England pounding the rock just over and over again? 
They've had six rushes on this drive, six of the nine plays. You get a penalty, you get to reset your offense. One first down. Burkett tackled forward for a bounce four. And how huge is this for your defense, which on into this drive had been on the field way too much, you know, through two and a half quarters, and they needed this break. To go right back out there, if you'd had to punt again, been asking a lot for them. Keith Butler's defense trying to come up with a solution. A drive that's gone over six and a half minutes. Vince Williams returns to the linebacking core. Second and six. And Michelle slices ahead for about three more. Big third down coming up. Twenty-three straight red zone drives against Pittsburgh. The Patriots have scored, 18 of them being touchdowns. Got another. This is the third defender has been nicked on this drive. This one is Cam Hayward, and we'll step aside. Can do. He walked off. He got rolled up on a little bit. Alu Alu, there he is, 94. Comes in for this crucial third and four. But Dupree has returned. He was nicked earlier on this drive, 48. And now from the Steelers 13. Quick pass. Edelman stopped a yard short. A lot of helmets on him. He's a yard short. Wonderful and job. You see fighting inside by Edmonds to get in there and disrupt that, almost making, oh my goodness, that ball should have been Dupree. intercepted. Unbelievable. They're gonna go field goal here. And fourth and one. Guskowski's made 49 straight from inside the 40. And this is just 28. Ball start, offense number six, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Last time the Steelers saw an opposing kicker trying to drill a three-pointer at this end of the field was the end of that Chargers game where they jumped offside. What was it, two, three, a dozen times? <laughs> I mean, it was... <laughs> they're like, we're going to jump offsides and block the kick until you don't call it. Exactly. <laughs> so we'll make this the length of a PAT, 33 yards. Kowski. Now 50 in a row from inside 40. 14-10 Steelers. Final seconds of the third quarter. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by KFC. It's finger licking good. And by low. Beautiful skyline of the Steel City. As we had our first points on the board in over 26 minutes of action. A field goal. Mike Oskowski to trim the lead to 14-10. Back from what these two remarkable franchises have done. Certain decades. How about the 70s? All those titles, the Ots, three of them for the Patriots, a couple for the Steelers, 2014, 2016. You add them all up. Steelers with six, most all time. Patriots with five. Of course, the Steelers with only three head coaches in the last 50 years of this organization. And Belichick has coached against each one of them many times, from Noel to Coward to Mike Tomlin. Samuels, running play, able to get about six or seven yards to start the drive. But we'll close out the third quarter, ready for the fourth. Was this going to be a good one? We never thought it'd be close, though, did we? No. Just, we're surprised, aren't we? <laughs> Once again. Hopefully, don't come down to a kick if you're Pittsburgh. Kid. Could be high drama around here. See you in a second.
sort out a lot of different seedings and situations as we get late in this season. Yeah, yeah, we got 23. Who will be the two at the end of the week? Who will be the three? Who will lead the AFC North? Who will be the six? All going to be decided in these 15 minutes as Samuels is able to break one out to about the 47. And the rookie has a 100-yard game. That's 109 on 12 totes. Tight end comes back. Misdirection again. So much misdirection today out of Pittsburgh. It's been difficult for New England to just determine where the run is going. Five three, five three. How about Samuels coming up with a 100-yard performance? Hey, he's been impressive today, Jim. Average nine yards of carry. And able to pick up five, maybe four, out of something that looked like was going to be a loss of one. Well, we're talking about misdirection. We're going to go over here and go, everyone. And nope, we're going to go right back over here. And New England's had a hard time with it. This is the toss counter. They ran twice. And it's pretty similar. I mean, it's a completely different style. But you see the misdirection? The last two plays they ran were the same play again. Not the toss counter, but a play that just starts forward and weaves all the way back to the other side of the defense. Second and six at the 50. Switcher started in the backfield as they go down the field and over the head of Washington. Washington had those two big catches that helped get the Steelers in that third quarter down to a first and goal at the four when well, they came up empty. Yeah, they did. McCourty does a really a, just a good job staying on his outside shoulder with the safety help inside, and it's just a tough throw. It's been a quiet second half for Antonio Brown. Right he hasn't caught a ball since right halftime. Well, that's because they haven't used the empty formation. That's how they got him free, and that's why I said it was a great first half schematically because they, they used it. You see him in empty here. That can get him open. Third and six in traffic. The ball ends up in the hands of Harmon with a second interception. Gilmore was in there. Brown was in there, and the Steelers once again turn it over to Deron Harmon. Outside over here. And Gilmore makes this play. Gilmore's ability to not let Rodgers go upfield makes it so he's able to get in on the play because Antonio Brown is wide open. That's an interception. Oh. I mean, look at this. Off the reflection, once again, seems to do the trick at Heinz Field for Harmon. Two interceptions today. On first down, out of the backfield, swing it over to Rex. And Burkhead has a gain of six. Burger. <laughs> Frustrated with that last one. A drive that started off with a couple of big runs by Samuels and then got bogged down. Led to a giveaway. They're minus 10 on the season and take away giveaway. Yeah, they'll win a lot of games with that. Second and four. Play action. Across the middle. Brock for the first time. And he's tackled down at the 40. Pick up 13. Gronk goes up. And that's how you can get him open. You have to have people who have to play two keys, the run game and the pass game. Because if you just drop back right now, they're double teaming him a lot. So you get the run game involved. And now you're able to pop him right behind the linebackers as they sell out to try and stop sure. the run. Down the middle. Edelman tumbles at the 15. And the Patriots are inside the 20, in the red zone after that 25-yard pass play. Watch. Boom, right there. The Steelers run into each other. 
and you see that that's what opens up. Burnett runs in. The, yeah. Sutton, I think, who was covering him. And that only gets wide open, but not very efficient there if you're a Pittsburgh Steeler defender. From the 15. Brady, who's gone over 70,000 yards passing in his career in this game today, passed it. And that's Michelle. Ball came out. They rule him down. David Oliver, the near side down judge, ruled him down. Down by contact prior to the ball coming out. I didn't hear the beginning of that, but it sounded like he's obviously down by contact at the end. And here they come, communication. Pittsburgh defense looks to be out of position. There is a challenge flag thrown out. Well, if, if you threw the challenge out, I mean, it's a good idea, especially if you were going to take a timeout anyway because they were about to snap the ball. Exactly. It would cost you a timeout if you it, lose yes. the challenge anyway. Here was the play. Listen for a whistle. Correction. The official ruled forward progress was stopped prior to the ball coming out. Therefore, by rule, there is no challenge. You can't challenge that. It's going to say that you can't challenge it. Forward progress was the call. Can't challenge forward progress. So you did actually, though. That's still smart because you stopped them from snapping that ball with the people not in the right position. Yeah, they appeared not to be set on defense. Josh Gordon was at the top and no one was on him. Sutton. Oh, finally Gronk outside the numbers. He's got Hayden on him. Bottom of the screen. Watch the safety. Does he come down here? Otherwise, Brady's going to look to him. Second and eight. Movement. Trent Brown, pre-snap, going to cost New England five. You can tell when it gets important, can't you? They're going to move Gronk into the positions and make you define your defense. This has got to be a false start. False start. Offense. Number 77. Five-yard penalty, second down. This place is loud right now. <laughs> Hard to miss this one. The biggest person on the field <laughs> moves an inch. Look at, look at that. Seven pre-snap penalties against the Patriots. Backs them up to the 18. Cam Hayward has come back out on defense. After being shaken up late in the third. Now they're doubling Gronk at the bottom. You see the safety on top. Second and 13. They go to the other side. It's Hogan brought down. Brought down quickly by Hilton. Pick up a five. Mm, New England had their one-on-one -on -one shot the play before. Give Pittsburgh credit. They were not going to give it to you again. Now Third what do they eight. do? Third and eight from the 13. I put Gronk on the outside and Edelman inside of him. Gronk has a go route. Edelman, you have an option route. Put them next to each other and see what happens. Brady, who's hit his last seven passes, to take this from the gun. The safeties are going to stay in the middle of the field. If they get wide, that's wrong. They should not get wide. They can pick up a first at the five. Gronkowski fights for it and gets it. He was doubled up by Davis. And Edmonds, and he was able to fight through him for the yardage. Edmonds is just late. Davis is covering him, but this is what I said. You can't go back deeper. You've got to get in the middle of that field and take Gronkowski out of the game on a key situation. So now first and goal. Devlin and Michelle in the backfield. The Patriots trying to take the lead. Michelle up ahead. Michelle with a flag. Tackled by Bostic at about the two. Holding offense, number 61, 10-yard penalty replay, first down. On the right tackle, Marcus Cannon. 
Marcus Cannon right here, right tackle. We'll see if he gets a little bit, uh, well, it's a drive block, but you're not supposed to put your arm around the side. That can be, that left arm right there, you can't do that. Although he did move him off the ball pretty quickly. First and goal at the 15. James White has come in. Take the reverse. Get it to White. And he's going to lose two as Vince Williams was the man who headed up the defense there. Mm, it's the fake reverse screen. We're going to fake a reverse and then come back and hopefully you take the bait. And Pittsburgh is not buying it. And they are flying around right now. New England. Big penalty. Cost you field position. Oh, here we go. Second and goal at the 17. Now the pressure. Brady heaves it. And is it intercepted? He came down with it and the feet down for Hayden. Intercepted. Ruling on the field. The feet were down. And he never makes this type of mistake. Throws it down the sideline. Hayden comes off Edelman. And a catch. Yes. Wow. Number of 2016, 180 attempts. There was pressure. What a job by Hayden to jump up and grab it and get the feet down. And now the Steelers take over at the four. Lady. Run it up the middle. And that's just good for one. Well, Gronk's going to go up the field, and this is why the interception happens. Get ready to pause this right here. Go ahead and pause this. Gronk is running this way. Now, Brady's getting ready to throw, and when he lets that ball go, he thinks he's going to throw it way out in front of Gronk and out of bounds. The problem is he couldn't see Hayden out in front. Hayden was standing over there, coming off Vettelman, and makes a great play. You think he was just trying to throw it away? He was, and he was trying to, it was a throwaway that he couldn't quite get away out there, but he knows Gronk is in that area, and he saw him running, he was open, but you just can't see out in front of a player coming off another player. Second and nine. Sanders looking for a crease. To think that the Steelers had a first and goal at the four in the third quarter, ended up not scoring on the drive with a missed field goal, and that the Patriots then gave one back, so to speak. They had it first and goal at the five. The penalty and the whole thing leads to an interception. Exactly right, and I feel like this game, you know, right now there's been, I mean, those penalties for New England are killing them, but doesn't it feel like Pittsburgh should be up by 10 or 14? I mean, they're just moving the ball. They're kind of, they're really making it difficult on New England. The missed field goal, obviously. Well, they've got a big third and seven right here, Tony. Yeah. Six minutes approaching. Could give New England a short field if they fail to convert. But they do convert. It's McDonald with the catch. Tough to defend everybody. Roethlisberger finds the matchup with the leverage. Chung is inside. He knows... McDonald has an outbreaking route, and he goes and finds the right area and delivers it. By the way, the interception by Hayden, just the seventh of the whole year by the Pittsburgh defense. A defense that has been Wait. much maligned the last few weeks in is, fourth quarter action. Isn't that oh, yeah. shocking, though, to put this kind of pressure on quarterbacks? All season leading sacks. Usually, yeah. They have only six picks before that one. Unusual for Samuels. Able to tumble for about five. That's why they lost it the last three games. They lost the turnover ratio six to one, I believe. Next Sunday, doubleheader action. Houston at Philadelphia, the early headliner. We're going to be down in the Big Easy. Big Ben and the Steelers take on Drew Brees and the Saints in the national doubleheader game to the full nation. On the 23rd of December, happy holidays to all of you. We'll get it started next Sunday. NFL today at noon Eastern. Second and five, and inside five minutes. 
Yeah, if I'm calling the game for Pittsburgh right now, I'm trying to win this football game and score a touchdown. I don't want this having one of those situations where Brady gets it. That's the toss counter again, and it works again. Samuels for about six. And that's worth some valuable time on the clock for Pittsburgh. Don't get conservative, Pittsburgh, because I can tell you that New England's waiting for. That's first down. Move the chains. And now New England, they're going to come up and give you a bare front. They're going to come up and give you all-out pressure. They're, they're not going to let you run this football to finish out this game. They're going to make you throw it and play man-to-man, -man, and they're going to let you have A-B one-on-one. They're going to let you have Schuster one-on-one, -on -one, and they're going to risk it. Luke Thorny! Both teams with all three timeouts remaining. They'll run it again, Samuels. Dive ahead for only one. So they've worked it out to the 26. After taking it over off the interception, back at the four. Timeouts. I, I don't like using them yet. New England, they need to wait. Pittsburgh, obviously, not going to use it. New England, right now, I don't use them at all until they get another first down. After that, then I would start to use them. Leo, Leo. See all the pressure, all the guys up by the look. You got one-on-one -on -one with your receivers outside. It's, it's time to throw the ball. Two downs in a row. That's what they're going to do. Second and nine. They pick up the blitz. They go long. Looking for Brown. And it lands at his feet. Gilmore had good coverage. He did. And you know you're getting one-on-one -on -one at this point. Belichick's not going to let you just do the same thing. So you get one-on-one. -on -one. Brown now is going to have opportunities. And Gilmore gets away with a little bit of a pull there. Stops his momentum. Third and nine. Need to get out to the past of 35 for the first. Finally, there's the empty formation. That's what I wanted to see. This is this is when the quarterback can tell everything that's going on. If you're going to pressure, you got to get guys down in there. And this is what works so well in the first half. Timeout called by Roethlisberger. 3.14 to go in a third and nine on the other side. Is on Verizon, America's most awarded network. Garmin. Get a Garmin smartwatch and beat yesterday. And by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Coming back for a third and nine. The Steelers in the second half have not scored between Antonio Brown and Juju Smith-Schuster. Second half, one catch for one yard. That by Juju in the third. And they're going shotgun for this third and nine situation with the back. Here comes a run around defense, a bunch of guys running all over. And then at the snap, watch the safeties to double Antonio up here. <laughs> Stepping up. Buying time. Oh, open. Caught by Samuels. Oh, Ben Roethlisberger. He's going to move around, but Samuels is going to make this play. Let's get a little chip on the edge. He's covered. Ben, move around, slide. Make the defender think, John Simon, that you're going to run and then throw it to the guy he's covering. Timeout called by New England. Yeah, exactly. They have to now. Roethlisberger now. 22 of 33 for 236. Two touchdowns, two picks. This is one of the few times we've really seen him extend the play today, isn't it? That was the biggest of the day. Still a lot of time left in this football game. You got two timeouts, the two-minute warning. I still don't think you can just go straight conservative route here and just hand it off twice and then try and connect on a third and eight or nine. I think you want to still have a smart play, but New England is going to be playing the run. Everyone's one-on-one. -on -one. You can fake a handoff, throw a slant. You got Antonio Brown at the top. They're going ground to the left. Samuels squeezes through. Samuels has got a first down. And the flag is on the field. Oh, this one's going to be on New England.
He thought it was going to come back for a second. Holding. Defense. Number 90. Five yard penalty from the end of the run. First and 10. Malcolm Brown is going to be in the middle. I think he's right here. And he holds the center trying to move up to the second level, but tough to tell from that angle. Your ability to run out the clock and just do that to a team like Nuno who yeah. knows you're running it. Impressive if they can do this again. They got Ridley in the backfield. Ridley slips for a moment, then changes direction. And holds on with two hands. And now a quick timeout by the Patriots. Timeout. Pittsburgh with 2.46 to go. Seven. Steelers have driven 65 yards to this point after taking over off the interception at their own four. It's been a five minute drive. And it's back to Samuels. Well, and ahead, nowhere. I do not like that play call. Last time out used by New England. Why, why did you not like that call? Well, because now we're in a third, you know, in six, seven type situation, okay? And you're almost saying we just need a field goal to win this game, which is not true. And you hand that off because we've got to waste some clock, but that's not near as important as getting yourself. I mean, you have a field goal kicker that you already went into great detail on how he's been kicking. That is less than a given. And then on top of it, the field goal only gives you a one-score lead, and you give the ball back to Brady with probably two minutes to go in the game. Two minutes to go, needing seven to send it to overtime. I want my best player with two chances at it. I want a Ben Roethlisberger to have a chance to throw it right there, and then if he doesn't get it there, he has another shot on third down. I, I never want him to only get one look, and all of a sudden you can have some great scheme or do something. They he's, he's, he's got a chance right now, though. They've converted twice on this drive on third down, both via the pass. Uh, this, this could be anything. They got double guys in the A-gap. They could pop out. They could come. They got a guy lined up like he's doubling Antonio Brown. What does he do? They're going up top, and they're coming after him. Pass is lofted to Smith-Schuster. And the ball is out and complete. That was J.C. Jackson, who wouldn't let him get hold of it. And now Boswell takes the field for what will be a 48-yard attempt. This ball dropped from the sky, and he has it, he has it, and Jackson with great technique. Yep. New England does this as well as anybody. The, the DBs, they don't ever get penalties, but here we go with the kick. You got this one, Jim. 48 yards. He's missed from 32 in this half. And the kick by Boswell. Tomlin said after the Oakland loss, the game against the Patriots, he called it Redemption Sunday. You watch, he said, it's going to be Redemption Sunday. They still got to hold off Brady and company. Two and a half minutes, seven-point margin, but what a big kick. Well, you talk about redemption. Nobody needed to come back out and have a better play than Boswell. Well, that was redemption, redemption right there. Redemption Sunday for that Absolutely. kid. He needed this. That was big. And everybody right now in that building says, okay, I see you. You can step right up and hit it right in the heart. Yeah, he did. He gutted it. That right there is bringing him back next week. I don't, regardless of how this goes, it would have been much tougher. But here we go. Seven-point game. He was three for eight for the year between 40 and 49. That was from 48, as you said, right down Broadway. Tom Brady with the ball. And the defense, though, this has been the big story, is the defense not being able to make the play at the end of these last three weeks. And let's go ahead. The greatest ever, really, in this role. Coming out. And you could probably just say it in general. You don't have to say in this yep. role, but I tell you, this is, you're bringing out, what is it, five-time Super Bowl champion? Yep. And during this, you're bringing out a guy who's eight and one against you. You're bringing out a guy 
who took him down last year and scored. Ben's seen this story before. Is it going to be different because your defense is better? You have the guys up front to do it, but that's number 12 over there. With time. Deep ball over the head of Hogan. And again, this is a defense that over the course of these last three weeks, late in fourth quarters, Tony, they've given up touchdown drives of 73, 75, 79, 79, and 64 yards in the final minutes the last three weeks. So now, can they turn and reverse fortunes? They're going to make noise, and they're going to get in the playoffs. I think this, like I said already, I think this is a must win if they want to get in the playoffs. This drive is going to tell you everything you need to know. Second and ten. Pass. Pulled down. What a catch. We saw Edelman shaking up earlier. He's still a yard short. It's going to be third and one. No timeouts. Brady's going to get him on the ball. Sideline doesn't matter yet. you got to get the snap before the two-minute warning. Get a playoff. You can run it here. Yeah, you got the two-minute warning right behind get it. Get the first down. And they do go ground, and they pick up the first with White up to the 40. Whew. Two minutes to go. Heinz Field. Steelers lead at 17-10. Ball in the hands of Brady. By Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Applebee's gift cards. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. If you're a football fan, this is as good as it gets. Two minutes to go. Renegades playing inside the arena. Tom Brady has the football, needing to drive the distance to send the game to overtime. And here we go. Flag first. And yet another pre-snap penalty against New England. Well, it just got crazy rocking here during the timeout. Well, it's sir, it. offense on the 62. Five-yard penalty. First down. It's so loud in here. The whole left side of the line flinches and... I'm telling you, it's just... As a quarterback, you gotta just... Stay real calm, and no one's calmer than that guy. He thrives in this. Yeah, cool hand Luke right there. First and 15. Guns it. Wide open. Down to the 30 is Edelman. What a throw. Edelman right through the middle of the defense. Brady throws him away from the defender. So he was running straight, and the ball by Brady brings him in. Oh, here we go. 34-yard pickup. He got away from Morgan Burnett. And now with a minute and a half, middle of the field, White. No more zone. That was back-to-back -back zone plays. It's time to go up and cover a man-to-man. -man. If you do, fine, but they got to score quick. You'll have time. Get up in and come after him a little bit. Don't let him pick you apart. They're coming after him. Brady knows it. He's signaling. They've sacked him once today. Little pass across the middle down to the 16 is White. And we're inside of a minute. 52 seconds, no timeouts. The out-of-bounds still doesn't matter. If you can get out-of-bounds, great. But it's really just completions of getting yards for Brady. Brady slides to his right. Looks, looks, throws to the sideline where it's caught by White. So Brady getting the time to operate and move this team down the field. 59 yards and six plays so far. You're going to see the same coverage that you've seen throughout the game. i, I got to imagine Pittsburgh is going to have their safeties in low. Remember how late he was last time to guard Gronk on that quick pass in the red zone? Right now, you're going to see a similar type approach. These guys got to stay down in here. Don't get too far back. Stay in there. Second and five from the 11. Pass thrown in the direction of Gronkowski.
Trubisky. And they had two Steelers around them. Holding. Offense. Number 69. Ten yard penalty. Second down. Shaq Mason called for the hold. Shaq. Mason 69. Yeah, that's a hold. Well done by Tewitt. That backs With up New move. England to the 21, Tony. Now, time becomes a little bit of an issue. If I'm Brady, I'm doing a double move on the outside, and I'm taking a shot right here. It might be your last chance. You get one on one. Mr. Cool takes the snap from the pocket with all kinds of time goes to the end zone and it's over the head of everyone he ended up hitting the ground after the release pass in the direction of Gronkowski 26 seconds to go the pressure on Tommy feels it waits to the last possible moment Hayward protect him New England hasn't found the end zone since his third snap of the game Now you got Gronk on the bottom. Third and 15, 26 seconds. Give him time. And again, goes in the direction of Gronkowski. It's fourth down. Nothing there. Gronk is literally getting double and almost triple teamed. He gets pushed there. Another guy, and there'll be another safety coming over from the middle. Brady's looking at him. He's tired. There's not a lot of places to throw the football right now. Pittsburgh needs to take a timeout, Jim. That's what they've done. And you think of not only the fan bases of the Patriots and the Steelers, but you think about fan bases for the Houston Texans, who could be the two at the end of the day if New England loses, the Ravens, who would move in front of the division if somehow the Patriots came back to win this game, Indianapolis, which right now has its seating and the move into the top six, hanging in the balance depending on this game. There's so much at stake right here. Well, last week, New England fell victim to the miracle in Miami. Now... Can they come up with a miraculous touchdown of their own? Man, I, I just, I, in the last two, three plays, there's been nothing available on the outside. They've gone down the field. I got to assume you're getting the same coverage because it's worked. The problem is Tom Brady knows it's worked, and he's had a timeout to tell everybody exactly what to do. He thinks he's going to have some. He's running the same exact look on offense to get what he wants. We'll see. Steelers drop back. Right around the first down yardage at the six. Here's Brady down the middle. And it's knocked down and complete. Intended for Edelman. And after three difficult and demoralizing weeks, the Pittsburgh defense today steps up. Boy, did they ever. You could feel it as the game was going. He's going to look to the right. That's what his plan was. I'm going to use... Brock is a decoy, and Edelman, I'm going to come back to you. I think he wanted Edelman to stop and come right back downhill, and Edelman kept running up a little and made it a jump ball. They had a chance at it. The ball was just a tick high. What a football game. Whew. You got to give this Pittsburgh defense credit. And their plan, they double teamed Gronk and Edelman throughout this game. They used a Belichick principle defensive philosophy in this game, and it worked fantastically throughout the football game. New England suffers back to back December losses for the first time since 2002. And you know what? They may meet again. You're right. This has a unique way of coming back around sometimes. And boy, just high level play on these two these two football teams. I mean, they both really knew how important this was and something had to give. 
I think Pittsburgh was out of the playoffs as it played out if they lost because going to New Orleans and then you're going to need help. You need help by a couple teams if you'd have lost today. Here was the last play. Too steep and all kinds of Steelers assistance in on that play. Three players in the area. And to think that New England closes out its road schedule in the regular season at three and five on the road this year. Mm. We'll go back home to close out with divisional games at home against Buffalo and the Jets. And Tracy, down to you. Thanks a lot, and Ben. Your coach talked about this being Redemption Sunday for this team after the last three weeks for this defense being much maligned, and then for Boswell as well. How important was this victory for you guys today? Huge, and to win at home. We haven't been that great at home, so uh, this is a total team victory. I'm so proud of so many guys, uh, all, all phases of football, so uh, God is good. It's an awesome day. And to beat the Patriots, where you guys really struggled against in the past, does that give it more meaning? I mean, if you, if you say no, you'd be lying a little bit. I mean, they are the, uh, you know, the, the Tom Brady's over there. They're, they're the best for a reason. They always have a bullseye on their chest. They always will. Uh, they're one of the best teams of football, and so anytime you can beat them, you got to take a little bit more on it. Knowing what's transpired with the playoff race coming into this game, did you feel as though this was a must-win today? Well, it's that time of year. Every game's a must-win for us, so regardless of records, regardless of who we're playing, where we're playing, we need them all. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Boy, the way this game started, too, with each team scoring touchdowns in their first possession, you never really thought after that there'd be only one more touchdown the rest of the game. No, you didn't. And everyone, you know, we we talked about it in our production meeting, that how important this game was. I mean, just look at this, the way it lines up now. Yeah, I mean, this is huge, though, because if they didn't win this, I mean, Pittsburgh right here, moves all of a sudden to way over here. Yep. And now they're at the mercy of a lot of other people and they have to go to New Orleans. And that was just too daunting, I thought, because you'd have to not only win that game, but then you need to help even with winning that game. So we saw Joe Hayden who came up with a huge interception in this game. The Patriots had two red zone possessions in the fourth quarter and never got in. The Hayden interception at the end of the game here, being able to get aided by the holding call, pushing the Patriots back, but they were in the red zone again, trying yeah. to tie this thing up. But how, how many times, though, did we think this game was different? It just felt like, wow, they're getting way more pressure than they normally get on Brady. It was, it really was different. I felt this was a different Pittsburgh front, and it was really kind of neat to see that they we're getting in. I mean, they, they were able to play, and they played almost a New England Patriots style of defense. Double team, double team. Take him out in this situation. Take him out here. I mean, that was impressive, and it was a change. Give Mike Tomlin credit. He deserves it today. Impressive. So it's Kansas City right now at the one. Of course, a lot to settle out west with the Chargers still with two weeks to go. Houston, though, if they can win two games at Philly.